Your microphone's off, just so you know. Oh, sorry. No, not you, oh. Michael Ovaldi. Okay, well, good evening, good evening, everybody. I want to welcome you all to the PV Conservation Commission public hearing. Today is Wednesday, February 17th, because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Tonight's public hearing is being held by means of a Zoom webinar so that we can stay safe and meet the requirements set by Governor Baker. I will read Governor Baker's order suspending certain rules regarding public meetings. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending Certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, General Laws, Chapter 30A, Subsection 18, the governor, Governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Community Conservation Commission will be conducted by a remote participation to the greatest extent possible. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but an effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Okay, uh, so tonight um, with the commission this evening is myself, Michael Rizzo, I'm the chairman, uh, Vice Chairman Bruce Comack, uh, Commissioner Mike Vivaldi, uh, Arthur Athus, and Amanda Green. We're all present this evening. Uh, our first item on the agenda uh, is under request for certificates of compliance. Item number one is a continued request for a full certificate of compliance is made by Curtis Young, environmental consultant, wetland scientist, on behalf of Auto Group One Auto for DEP file number 55-832. The project is entitled Proposed Inventory Lot. The address is known as Zero Willowdale Ave. Map 39, lot 29 and 23 in the city of PV. Good evening. Can you hear me? Uh, barely. Mike? <laughs> barely? Did you say Mike? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll speak up. Uh, this is uh, Kurt Young, uh, currently a consultant for Lucas Environmental. We filed a request for a certificate of compliance for the uh, Zero Willowdale Avenue inventory lot uh, for uh, Group 1 Automotive. Uh, it's located behind the Audi, Audi dealership on Andover Street, if you're aware of where that location is. Uh, it's basically a, an automobile storage, uh, an inventory lot used to supply uh, vehicles to both the Audi dealership and other uh, Group 1 dealerships in the surrounding area. Uh, we constructed the site uh, beginning in 2016. Uh, completed it uh, a while later. We had some delays involved in construction, but I got it taken care of. Uh, we filed for a certificate of compliance last year, uh, received a comment letter from uh, Will Pollitz uh, late in the year, uh, got caught with the weather uh, and eventually got a, a revised ASBIL plan uh, to him in response to some of his questions. Uh, and at this point, we've received a letter from Will uh, earlier in September, in uh, January, pardon me, uh, indicating that he was uh, comfortable with the engineering uh, on the project. Uh, beyond that, if there's any questions, I'm more than happy to address them. Hey, Lucia, I see there's um, DP's memo seems to be in order. Um, you may note about the commission, there's no concern, we recommend a full certificate. But we want to add um, conditions in perpetuity for an O&M plan and an LTPP in perpetuity. Uh, <clears throat> We're familiar with those. Uh, I talked with uh, Lucia earlier on that, and uh, that's fine. We understand the conditions. <clears throat> Anything else, Lucia? Um, also, so the O and M and the LT PPP would be in perpetuity, as well as a, a Appendix A guidelines for the disposal of the invasive plants. Okay. Um, that's something if you guys, um, if you want them to keep on, you know, treating the invasive invasive plants. Um, honestly, I don't really care about that. I think, I mean, this has been on the agenda for a long time, and the last time I looked at the file in depth, I'm pretty sure. Appendix A was talking about like um, rodeo or Roundup, which has glyphosate, and I'm not a huge fan of it. 
So I, I think it's most important the O&M and the LTPPP are in perpetuity. Um, as, as far as the invasive plants, that's up to you guys. And I don't know, maybe Kurt can talk about that. Where, yeah. where? Yeah, I'd like to uh, address that. I think it's a, Lucia has a good point. However, this is a this is an area of town which has very aggressive uh, bittersweet uh, vines uh, associated with it in near proximity to the site. Uh, we cleared many of those as away as we did the construction work. Uh, as I mentioned to Lucia earlier this year, or perhaps it was last year, that there has been some encroachment beginning and there we have a fence line that runs around the entire perimeter of the property, uh, both as a courtesy to the neighbors as well as to uh, keep uh, folks out from getting into the inventory lot. So that uh, bittersweet is beginning to encroach onto the fence line. We do need to do some uh, intermittent invasives control just to keep that under control. And I think we would plan to do that uh, as a part of uh, annual inspection and maintenance as necessary. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to retain that. I think we should keep that. Sounds good to me. Those would be my recommendations that a, um, a full certificate of compliance, um, adding uh, those two conditions in perpetuity. Okay. Um, any of the commissions have any questions or want to discuss this matter further? <clears throat> I seeing none, could I um, get a motion, motion to um, close the public hearing? Move to close the public hearing. And motion to uh, issue a full certificate of compliance. Motion to issue a certificate of compliance. A request a certificate of compliance. Uh, can I have a, a second on that? Second. Okay, and that would be with, with the conditions that Lucia uh, as, listed. As with conditions as as stated. All right. And did um author did you second that? Did, yeah. I, did I hear that correct? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do a roll call though. So right now, a motion to issue a full certificate of compliance with the two conditions um, we just cited. Uh, Chairman Rizzo. Yes. Vice Chairman Comac. Yes. Commissioner Feld Canton. Yes. Commissioner Green. Yes. Commissioner Vivaldi. Yes. Commissioner Athos. Yes. Great, and it so it passes unanimously. And I'm I can't remember if um, you gave uh, Amanda voting rights at the beginning, but she would have voting rights by default um, in the absence of Stu and um, and Travis. Okay. I, if I may uh, uh, mention something, uh, thank you very much for that uh, vote. Uh, and Lucia, uh, could you send that uh, document, the certificate of compliance, to me, and I'll get I'll send you an address tomorrow. Uh, so you've got that uh, group one has a rather large organization and sometimes we've lost certificates of compliance and trying to you know issue new ones is a pain in the neck for you guys as well as uh, them so uh, i'll give you a call tomorrow or send you an email uh, yeah just to, just drop me an email i typically will send an email out anyway because i don't uh, and now that it you know it, it's a, it's um we're doing e-signature so it's now it's a little easier for me to create a second copy but um but right. yeah just email me the address. I don't know how fast I'm going to get to it. Honestly, I'm working on a few side projects. Yeah, we've we've uh, we've been uh, hanging around waiting for it for a long time. So this is great. We appreciate the the vote and uh, look forward to getting the document itself. But uh, you all stay safe. Have a good evening. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, item number two on the agenda is a request, continued request for a full certificate of compliance is made by uh, Bill Manuel for Wetlands and Land Management for Roy Simeo's Puny Missile Light Plant, DEP file number 55-840. Project is known as Puny Missile Light Substation at Russell Street. <clears throat> There's snow on the ground. So um, I was just in communication with Roy today. And uh, obviously it was snow on the ground and it sounds like there's snow coming tomorrow. Me and him are just gonna try to keep an eye out. And when we all can get out there, me, uh, Bill Manuel and Roy, and then any of you guys, if you, I know Mike, you're close by 
if yeah, you want to come see it. I mean, I'm I pretty excited. I would. If you let me know when that is, I will gladly come. Yeah, I'll let you know and I'll like text you too because um, I mean, this was kind of an exciting project. This was, you know, they they restored a whole area of buffer zone. It's pretty exciting to me at least. So, so that was a continued one. So you guys just need to um make a continuance. Motion, motion to continue this. Second. Uh, a second. Second. Oh, second. All in favor? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, so I have Bruce made the motion. Who seconded it? Vivaldi? Yes. Okay, I do need to do a roll call. Um, Chairman Rizzo? Yes. Vice Chairman Comac? Yes. Commissioner Feld Canton? Yes. Commissioner Green? Yes. Commissioner Vivaldi? Yes. Commissioner Athis? Yes. Great, it passes. Okay. Okay. Item three on the agenda is also under request for certificate of compliance. Continue request for certificate of compliance made by Peter Glasdale Jr., William, and Sparages on behalf of AM Con Corporation, Patrick Coburn, for DEP file number 55 865. Project was the construction of a commercial building and parking area, demo, rebuild. Stormwater features and parking. The address is known as 3 Mount Pleasant Street, Mount Pleasant Drive, Map 29, Lot 6 in the city of PD. Um, they too have asked for a continuance. Um, I don't know if you guys read the novel I wrote um, in my notes, but there's a lot of things. They, they could get a partial certificate tonight for sure, but I think they just want the full certificate. Um, and at this point, they're... Their, their stormwater is not 100% correct, and they still haven't hashed that out with Will. And there's no sidewalk. I mean, I parked on the sidewalk, and so they have extra pavement. The as-built that they submitted was incorrect. Work was done after it. Um, so there's, there's a lot of things on this, and I guess they don't want a partial. I, I didn't see um, Usher on my... Um... Office 365, I didn't have anything in that folder. Hmm, maybe, oh, it might be because they haven't given me anything this month. Um, so everything would be in the January folder possibly. I mean, I can pull it up if you want me to. Oh, no, it's okay. Just I was going through everything looking and I didn't have it. And, um, I wanted to see the video. I want to see the photos. I remember them before. I uh, wasn't too happy about not having the sidewalk in where it's supposed to be. Um, yeah, I'll make sure for the next meeting, hopefully we don't get like tremendous amount of snow and like they can actually get the sidewalk cut and, you know, possibly get some grass down or whatever. Um, I talked quickly with it, to, about it with Will, and it sounded like there might be some engineering issue with the sidewalk that was kind of over my head and I didn't want to get into it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to have to, I mean, they're going to have to come up with some sort of sidewalk that can fit with whatever the engineering issue is there. Um, cause you guys approved it and we can't not have a sidewalk there. Um, but I will make sure whatever meeting they're at, um, I put, I'll put all the most up-to-date stuff in it. I try to, like, if we continue stuff, I'll try to move stuff out and put it in, you know, and label it as older, whatever address it is. And then the newer stuff. I know it gets confusing because there's just so many things sometimes. Okay. Um, but we do need a motion. Okay, so we have a motion to continue this. Motion to continue. Second it. Second it. Yep. Okay. So I have a motion on the floor from Bruce, seconded by Melissa, to continue. I'm going to do a roll call. Chairman Rizzo. Yes. Vice Chairman Comac. Yes. Commissioner Feld Canton. Yes. Commissioner Green. Yes. Commissioner Vivaldi. You're on mute. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes. Um, Commissioner Athis. Yes. 
All right, great. It passes and it is continued. Uh, <clears throat> item four on the agenda is also under request for complete certificates of compliance. So that, that's continued until um, you guys, um, they already got their partial. That is continued, so you don't have to read it unless you want it. It's continued to the summer of 2021 or September. I just, I didn't want to take it off the agenda because then I would lose my radar on them and yeah. I would forget to follow up. Okay. Do we need to take a roll call on that or just? No, you already continued it uh, oh, right. last meeting, I believe. It's actually written into the um, the certificate of compliance that he has to he has to have this work done. You know, he has to start it by June, I think. I will warn you, number five. Um, they the attorney did ask for a continuance. <laughs> what, what project was that that we were just talking about that was continuing all the way to? September? It's the 166. Um, some people call it 160 Main, but I believe the actual address is 166 Main Street, also known as 160. It's um, right next to the bakery and downtown across the street from McDonald's. Okay. All right, so that's continuing that, right? Do we need to take a vote on that? I was just no, you already made that motion. I believe it was last month. All right. Um, item number six. We have the request for an extension permit on DEP file number 55 769. The request is being made by Tyler Eric and DeRosa Environmental. The project is a long term OM plan and PPE for existing stormwater system. Uh, BMPs, vegetation control, landscaping installed under the previous expired 1999 order conditions for file number 55 482. The property is known as 100 Booksby Village Drive. Uh, the order expired uh, in September of last year in 2020. The applicant is seeking for a one year extension uh, based on uh, local ordinance. Um, so I have a motion to um, extend this for one year. I'll move. Um, well, oh. it actually, I don't know if Tyler wants to talk, um, but all orders are technically told right now. So what that means is um, since it expired on August, he has September, October, November, December, January, February. He actually has seven months added on to this. So it, it's, it gets really, really confusing with these tollings. Um, it, it'll make more sense once the state of emergency is over. But the way I understand it is he doesn't, I mean, he technically didn't even need to come tonight because he still has a permit. But if he didn't get it extended, you know, I think they only have 45 days after, um, after the state of emergency has been lifted. Um, so anyway, I, I will leave it up to um, Tyler. I think I was just, my comments would be that you guys could relax the local ordinance and give him a three-year extension. Um, you know, on a case by case, it, it all depends on how you guys feel. Um, for, oh, I'm, I'm here, can everyone hear me? Yes. Yep. Again, Tyler Ferrick with the Rose Environmental. Um, as Lucia said that this is, um, we're just kind of getting ahead of the wave once the state of emergency finally um, ends, just to get ahead of it and get these orders extended. Um, but as many of you are probably familiar with this project, we've been in a few times extending this um, year after year. This is a management plan uh, for Brooksby Village as there's a lot of maintenance activities that happen around. Um, they have a lot of basins um, and ponds that actually function as the stormwater basins. So there is invasive species control um, there is general maintenance as um, redoing curbing, sidewalks, that sort of thing that's within the buffer zone. Um, and that's what this permit covers. So 
I know the the bylaw is just for a one year, but I was seeing if maybe um, we could do a three year as this is a, a an operations and maintenance plan and not really a construction site. Uh, it, seems, it seems reasonable to me. I know we usually only do a one year extension, but maybe under these conditions. Um, what are your thoughts? I'm fine. Yeah, so Mass DEP does allow three year extensions, um, which I, I think is great. And I also think our local ordinance is even better, which is a one year extension. And I think that there are certain there are certain orders that we can relax it a bit. And during the state of emergency, I think this order would be one of them because he's just going to keep coming. Um, basically, you guys have three options. You can, um, per the law, if you ex just want to extend it one year, you do have to add the seven or the six months. What a, it's August, September, October, November, December, January, February. You would have to add the six months. So it would actually expire February 2022. Or if you want to give him a three-year extension, you can go three years from, um, you know, eight, nine, 20, 20, and give it to him to 2023. I, I think we should do the February 2022. All right. Uh, Tyler, are you okay with that? Do you understand? Yeah. Uh, it seems like the commission just wants to to do the one year extension versus the three. And I, I know last year, that's kind of where the commission, how they felt that, that's fine. We'll come back next year. We were just seeing if there was any uh, possibility for a three year, uh, the commission felt comfortable, of course, but. But we just gave them a three year. Oh, I thought you guys said 2022. I recommend a, tw a one year extension per the told. All right, which gets us to 2020, February, 2022. Yeah, I I, I'll, I'll check with um, my my legal guru, but the way I understand it is, um, I mean, they, it, it's so crazy what's going on in the legal world. Cause Charlie Baker keeps changing everything like daily, it seems. I feel like every day I'm catching up. Um, uh, so, I'll, I can confirm that this is accurate and I'll give him a one year extension plus the told. That's the way I understand it. Because if they lift this state of emergency tomorrow, that's all he gets is six months. Yeah. So we're not giving him three years from now? No. Why well, you want to do that? I, I mean, Tyler, you're not going to get the work done in the next six months, right? No, I, again, this is just maintenance. So it's operation and maintenance. So every year we're going to be doing this, this work. So it's no new structures. It's just general maintenance, um, general, you know, fix potholes um, in the existing roadways, fix the sidewalks. If any, you know, uh, during the winter move and, and they plow it and they disturb one of the curbing, they replace it in kind. So that's what it covers during the growing season. There is, invasive species management that happens. And this was all put in a, a notice of intent previously. Um, let's another see, aspect you, is like- If you guys out. feel that it's important that he comes back every year, that's fine. No, I think, well, I'll tell you what, let's let's do, you know, they do a nice job. They keep this site really, really nice. Um, so let's do three years for them. Yeah, I mean, mostly this is, as far as we're concerned, like, I mean, like curbs and stuff, they have to be able to do that, maintain their roadways. But what I, my understanding of this order of condition is this is an aquatic plant management um, order of condition so that they can, you know, clean up all all the, the eutrophication and debris in the water. Is that correct, Tyler? Yep, includes that so, also. So, so throughout the year, there is control of algae and nuisance vegetation. Yeah. So in they're the, going to the need this for, for in perpetuity until like until your company or Solitude doesn't do this work anymore, correct? Correct. Yep. 
Yeah, that's why I was just saying three years, like, you know, just on like a, not every file, I don't want to give every file a three-year yeah. extension, but on a file like this where we absolutely know they're going to be coming every single year for the permit, it just makes it easier clerically for me and like admin, and they don't have to worry about it for a bit at least. It was, it was just a suggestion. I guess I'm, I'm okay with this. I'm okay with three years. So that would bring it to... Is that three years from now? I think it would, you could, I mean, you could do it three years from now if you just like straight from whatever the, the 8, 9, 2021. So if you wanted to do three or 2020, so it would, it, it would expire on August 9th, 2023. And then I have to find out if we can toll add the, then I think you also add the six months. Because it's just everything's been frozen and told. So that's, uh, that's, that's February 24 then. I think you're right. Yes. Well, all right. Let's do that. We'll extend it to February of 2024. So, so this uh, order of conditions doesn't ever have a, a they don't ever close out the, the order? No, I mean, it, the, the, yeah, that's, I agree with Michael. What, when does, so do they just keep coming in in perpetuity? Can we extend it? Can we extend it? How does that I work? I think that, I mean, as long as, I mean, I've seen, we have way older files. The, the one right before this, I think, is even older than this file. Um, and that's a, for a single family house that still hasn't been built. Um, okay, I don't know, Tyler, okay, so you're saying we already have an NOI. And we're just going to keep extending it as they're doing the maintenance. I, maybe Tyler, I mean, are yeah. you guys ever expecting to close this out and get a certificate of compliance? Um, we'll always need to do this general maintenance. So we'll always have to control nuisance vegetation. I mean, our hope is that over time we can install diffused air systems. So, you know, one day and manage the storm water. Um, so we don't have these algae blooms or nuisance vegetation. Um, but at that point, we're not there yet. So we're going to have to keep doing these algae treatments throughout the season. Um, so I guess for the time now, we're just looking to extend. Um, but in hopes, in the ideal scenario, we wouldn't have to do algae treatments in the future in which we could do a certificate of compliance. And I guess the only thing um, we would want to have would be perpetual conditions to control invasives around the pond. Um, which has already been um, occurring underneath the order. Okay. So motion to continue to February, uh, motion to extend the permit to February 2024. I'll move that. I can, I'll second that. Second by Bruce. All right, roll call. Chairman Rizzo. Yes. Vice Chairman Comac. Yes. Commissioner Feld Canton. Yes. Commissioner Green. Yes. Commissioner Vivaldi. Yes. Commissioner Athis. Yes. All right. It is extended three years plus the told six months. Great. Thank you all. You're welcome. Okay, um, item number six. No, that was six. Okay. We're on item number seven. Item number seven is the request for determination of applicability. The public hearing on a request for determination of applicability submitted by Marin Cameron Group, Inc. For Joseph Black and Don Marie uh, Lawman Black. <clears throat> proposed project is the, the following work in the buffer zone remove, removal of existing fence, removal of two shrubs, installation of new fence and new shrub. Property is known as 11 Leonard Road, map 105, lot 27 in the city of Cleveland. Good evening. For the record, John Morin from the Morin Cameron Group. Can everyone hear me? Yes. 
Uh, do you want, uh, could I share my screen? I can put the plan up. Okay. Yep, you should have, um, you should be able to, thanks. So let me know once you can all see this. Can you guys see that? Yeah. So again, for the record, John Morin from the Morin Cameron Group. We're here tonight representing Joe and Don Marie Black for a request for determination of applicability for the property located at 11 Leonard Road. Uh, what the Flax are looking at doing is they're going to raise the existing structure that's on the property, build a new house. As you can see, there's a wetland resource area off the property to the northeast. The 100-foot buffer zone from that casts on the, you know, the northerly part of this lot. As you can see, the, con the entire construction of the dwelling, decks, driveways, patios associated with the house are all outside the 100-foot buffer. The only thing we're requesting permission to do in the 100-foot buffer zone is the removal of an existing fence that's currently on the property to be replaced with the same type of fence that the abutters have, which is a six foot vinyl. We'd like to remove two shrubs. Uh, one of them is about 80 feet from the wetland. The other one's about 95 feet from the wetland. And we're proposing to relocate an existing shed that's on the property back to this back corner of the property as well. All proposed work is within existing lawn, maintained lawn area. So. We're not cutting, uh, replacing any woods or anything like that. It's all in maintained lawn. And we are proposing um, erosion control right along the lot line. So the closest point from the wetland to the erosion control is 69 feet. And the closest point from the shed to the erosion control is, I mean, from the shed to the wetland is 74 feet. Uh, there's no proposed changes in grades. Um, so technically, we really don't even need the erosion control because we're not changing grades, we're not moving dirt around, but we're just show, uh, proposing it just as a safety measure since we are in the buffer zone. Um, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. The wetlands were delineated by Greg Hockmuth from Williams and Sparagis. And again, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, uh, well, but so now you're gonna put the shed in the buffer zone. Correct. And again, the shed itself is 74 feet from the buffer zone. It's being placed in an area that's existing lawn. The shed fully complies with the Wetlands Protection Act and your local bylaw with regards to setbacks, and it should have no adverse impact. Well, you're not changing the grade at all? Nope. So the, the driveway is going to come in off of Demore? Correct. Okay. And you're actually moving the house forward? Yeah, we actually, um, the flax actually went to the zoning board and got relief from the zoning board to be able to pull the house forward a little bit. Okay. Seems thing. I guess just to be clear, the shed is not on cinder blocks, right? It's not raised, it's on, on the ground? No, the shed would be up on um, cinder blocks. That's how it would be set up. Okay. Do we know the size of the shed? Yep, it is. Approximately 24 by 16. 
The only reason you're here is so you can, is just for the work that's in the buffer. Correct. Yeah, and the only work in the buffer is like I had mentioned, the relocation of the shed, uh, the removal of a couple shrubs and the removal of an existing fence, which will be replaced with another fence. Yeah. Pretty much in the almost the exact same location. If you actually look at the, I'll zoom in a little bit. You can see right here the ghosted line with the circles. That's the existing fence. And based on the survey, we've got a little bit of room in the back so we can move that fence a little back further. And we're keeping it about a foot off the rear lot line. And we're just proposing a new fence. And there's a neighbor's fence that runs right along this sideline. So we're just connecting right up to the neighbor's fence. Straightforward. And then that um, uh, that buffer zone area, is that going to just be uh, lawn? Correct. And that's what it is right now. It's all maintained lawn. Uh, any particular um, storage uh, going to be proposed for this, the shed? What are you going to uh, be putting any chemicals or anything? No, no chemicals. It's your typical single family you know, shed, lawnmower, rakes, wheelbarrow, things like that. Okay. Any, um, any more questions from the um, commission? So there was just something in the uh, the notice here about the fence panels being raised. Lucia put that in. Lucia. Oh hi. Uh, so you guys are probably all wondering why such minor work is in front of you for an RDA because this is actually quite normal. This is like the whole purpose of what an RDA is for. Um, and the reason why I did have them file. Um, was because, do you see how large that house is that is getting built? Um, I don't know if you read what I said, but the my notes were the work proposed in the buffer zone is minor. However, the entire house will be demolished and reconstructed. It's important that the construction crew does not stockpile in this area without commission approval or knowledge. So my question is, is there gonna be stockpiling and where is it? Um, and again, this is a very straightforward determination. And yes, they probably didn't need to file um, a determination. I think we might have got lost in translation somewhere along our email chain. Um, but typically with fences, uh, you guys sometimes ask uh, certain panels to be raised four to six inches for wildlife movement. Now that can't always happen for various reasons. People have children, small dogs. They don't want wildlife getting in their backyard. Um, so that's just an option if, you know, the, the current owners agreeing to do that. Um, so I would recommend to condition this um, a negative determination um, with the conditions that staff is notified 48 hours before work commences in writing. Erosion controls must be inspected before work can commence. Um, no stockpiling in the buffer zone without the explicit written permission from the commission. So that's something we should talk about tonight. Um, and if you guys feel um, about the fence panels being raised, uh, like what this neighborhood's like, I don't really know what the wildlife is like in this area. Um, I did not do a site visit. Um, but basically the main reason why they're here is because I know that if this didn't get a permit from the commission, I would be out there probably two weeks after work started um, with some, some sort of an issue. So it's good that they filed, but did, they probably didn't need to as long as they submitted this with a letter um, because the shed, according to minor activities, a shed um, has to be 50 feet away from BBW. So the shed's completely minor and the fence would be considered minor as well. So it's really the stockpiling. Okay, I, I could support that. I'm not too concerned uh, about the lower, uh, having the fence uh, raised up. Can we just 
can we add it on to an I mean to an RDA as a condition? Well, the only thing if I could do an RDA with, with a negative determination with conditions. So we can say what Rusha just said, we can add those, you know, yeah, um, give a negative determination and add the conditions about the, uh, the things that Rusha mentioned. If I could just comment for a minute, obviously we have no issue with stockpiling in that area. They don't need to stockpile there. That's not a problem. Uh, as I had mentioned before, the existing yard is fenced in. And if we had to raise up a fence, it's going to kind of defeat the purpose if they're trying to keep animals in the backyard. Yeah. So I would just ask that we not be required and we could just leave the fence as a normal fence. Again, all these yards are all maintained lawns. Yeah. Um, not a whole lot of wildlife moving back and forth through there. So we would just ask, we have no problem with a condition that no stockpiling be within the buffer zone because again, we don't need to stockpile in there and we don't plan to, uh, but we would request that the fence just be installed like a normal fence. Okay, I could support that. Mm -hmm. So um, if there's no other questions, uh, does anybody else, anybody here wanna speak on this matter? Okay, uh, seeing none, then um, I've entertained an emo um, emotion or a negative determination with the conditions that Lucia uh, stated. Hello? I'm listening. <laughs> Somebody want to make a motion? Motion made. Okay. Second? Seconded. Second. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do a roll call. So we have a negative determination um, with the two conditions. Um, staff notified 48 hours before work commences in writing. Erosion controls must be inspected before work can commence. And two, no stockpiling in the buffer without the explicit written permission from the commission and made by Melissa, seconded by Amanda. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a roll call. Chairman Rizzo. Yes. Um, Vice Chairman Comac. Yes. Commissioner Felt Canton. Yes. Commissioner Green. Yes. Commissioner Vivaldi. Yes. Commissioner Athis. Yes. Okay, so that passes, but um, I think you guys actually forgot to close the public hearing. Um, there were no, I don't see anyone uh, with their hands up. Um, so you do have to go back and close it. I don't think I heard you do that. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Second by who? Bruce. Bruce, okay. And I am, I do have to do this. I'm, I apologize terribly. I know it's redundant. Um, Chairman Rizzo. Yes. Vice Chairman Comac. Yes. Commissioner Feld Canton. Yes. Commissioner Green. Yes. Commissioner Vivaldi. Yes. Commissioner Athis. Yes. All right, so it's closed and there is a negative determination. Thank you. And, uh, are you guys planning to build like ASAP? Do you, are, are you want this permit out the door immediately? No, he's, if, not, he's not gonna start until the weather breaks anyway. Okay, I just, if, if I know someone's hot for it, I'll, I'll try to, you know, stop what I'm doing and get it out the door. No, I really appreciate that, but we're not that, um, if we could get it within the next three weeks, that should be fine. Absolutely. It's terrific. <clears throat> Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is item number eight. It is under notices of intent. It's a public hearing on a notice of intent submitted by Attorney John R. Kelty for Joseph Ruggiero, applicant in Tedisco Properties, LLC owner. Our proposed project is the renovation of, a, of existing professional office building to a funeral home with access egress alteration upgrade in riverfront and FEMA flood zone. This is an after the fact filing. Uh, 
work has commenced but has been halted by the building department. The property is known as 10 Chestnut Street, Map 85, Lot 187. Table. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my name is John Kelty. I'm an attorney practicing law here in Peabody at 40 Lowell Street in Peabody, Mass. Uh, the property in question is 10 Chestnut Street. That is actually where I began my career um, in the, well, we won't mention when I began my career. However, um, we have filed a notice of intent uh, for certain construction uh, that is taking place. The building permit uh, had issued to Mr. Ruggiero, who was here this evening, uh, attending this meeting uh, this evening. And uh, at such time as there were a few changes made, which were most notably the addition of a concrete pad uh, originally uh, down near the, uh, nearer to the brook at the rear of the premises and the addition of uh, a roof over, it shows roof over with columns on your plan. Uh, that's an area that uh, was uh, required uh, in order to achieve uh, compliance with uh, uh, certain statutory requirements uh, in the uh, uh, funereal uh, um, uh, CMRs. <clears throat> As such, uh, Mr. Tallarico had uh, suggested at that point uh, that uh, work at the exterior cease and that there be a filing with the commission. Um, Eastern Land Survey did in fact create uh, the package for filing with the commission. I did the mailing, uh, provided the affidavit back to uh, Lucia. Uh, mailing has been accomplished. All parties have been uh, placed on notice. Uh, and we, I would point out that the um, DEP has today provided uh, a, um, memo asking for uh, stormwater management uh, uh, pr uh, that an actual stormwater analysis be provided. Um, I did provide the commission with a stormwater checklist and actually the narrative attached to the original filing uh, sets out um, the with the construction taking place how much um, compensatory storage is lost. Uh, and then uh, they have, uh, Eastern Land Survey has regarded the losses as de minimis. There was a uh, uh, planter uh, that shows on the plan. Uh, it was removed as the narrative suggests, there was a survey done in 2018 uh, and the planter was in existence. Um, so that was already, um, sort of in the records at Eastern Land Survey. <laughs> so that <coughs> they located on our plan that we filed, they located that planter, <laughs> said that um, there was a, um, there was certain square footage in their narrative uh, provided by the removal of a planter that was, um, was sort of above ground it was railroad ties and uh, holding uh, earthen materials up. And then there was a sign located uh, in the planter as well as uh, certain shrubs. Um, Mr. Mello on the uh, project narrative has indicated uh, each elevation in increment and the uh, loss or gain of flood storage. And at the end of the day, uh, there is a total ground coverage change of approximately 216 square feet. Um, the removal of the raised uh, planting bed covering uh, yields us 144 square feet. Uh, that was um, gained, if you will, by removal of the planter. And as such, uh, we feel that the uh, impact uh, with regard to stormwater uh, is de minimis, and we would ask that the um, uh, that the commission approve and provide us with an order of conditions allowing us to uh, complete the renovation of the old law office 
into a funeral home. The city council has uh, considered this last year and granted uh, a special permit. So the, uh, at the back of the building, that roof, that roof over at the back corner, that's staying the way it is? Yep. Back right, correct? Yeah. So you're not it's really roof tight. over. Would you like me to share the plan? Do, do Does the applicant not want to share it? Do you need me to share it, Jack? Oh, I can't. I don't have the capacity to do that. Okay. I, I mean, I don't mind. I'm, I'm offering. I'll do it right now. Yeah, I, can, I can, have it on my computer. I can see it. May I ask you to share it? So the roof over uh, is a portico, um, and that's where the Hearst uh, and Coroner um, uh, deliver uh, isn't that true, Joe? Yeah, that, that's where we would um, back a hearse Intake. or a van and, and take anything in. Um, it's also where we would have like casket delivery um, of, you know, from the manufacturer um, delivered. It, it was just trying to accomplish um, mitigating any line of sight for, for the direct of butter. Um, it was the real goal of that, which is statute statutorily required by the Commonwealth with funeral homes. Commonwealth of Mass. And the other addition that uh, in what we've done there is that Chris has calculated uh, the loss of uh, volume, uh, which is represented by the uh, columns that will hold up the roof over. That was an area that was already paved and uh, there is no addition uh, extending out there. It's only the roof over the entrance uh, uh, for the delivery and uh, perhaps the hearst. And, and you're clearly not um, moving any closer to the brook in any way. With the exception of the columns. Yeah. And also the fire escape that shows on that Fire escape is on the other side from the oh, portico. Yeah. What are you doing? And are you the, moving that? No, the uh, fire escape is going to be added. Uh, originally, there was uh, an apartment uh, upstairs in the original house. Uh, when I was practicing law there, there was an addition that extended out to the back, out to with the area we're talking now. The second means of egress uh, to that apartment was actually inside uh, inside the office. Um, so when Mr. Uh, Ruggiero is confronted with uh, his uses, um, he needs a second means of egress uh, and um, that's where it will be. He can't have the second means of egress inside the building. Is there a deck on the top of uh, the addition, Joe? Um, there's, a, yeah, yeah, I proposed um, like pad um just so yeah that was a walk flat yeah. roof yeah uh addition and uh the uh building uh itself the original building out in the front on the street on chestnut street that was a uh, two-story and the second means of egress passed through uh through actually um, one of the offices in uh, the downstairs so this is necessary. You would need to exit uh, any apartment on the second floor and then cross over the flat roof to the fire escape. So and that meets code compliance. So would that primarily just be for emergency uh, exit? Yes, Not necessarily absolutely. Coming in and out? Yes. Correct. Correct. When you walk in the, um, the stairway on the left of the building, when you will walk in, there'll be a little entryway where you could take a hard right, and go upstairs to the apartment without being in the commercial space. Um, and then that, yeah, the back stairs would be emergency use only. And there's also a stair, if I'm uh, memory serves me, uh, at that front door too, is that correct? Not anymore, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. 
Has the commission had a chance to read DEP's comments? Because they're pretty serious. They just came in today. Yeah, thanks for that. Not your fault, Lucia, I know that. It's dated today. It's, why would it be my fault? No, I said it's not your fault. Um, I can't get my no. video to start. There it is. Um, I mean, this is flood zone. So if you guys haven't had a chance to read DEP's comments, um, their first sentence is the project is not approvable with the information submitted. No stormwater report was submitted and no information provided to confirm compliance with stormwater standards. Um, and then the final sentence is flood volume loss and compensatory flood storage must be provided at the same incremental elevation. So I think, I think that what Alicia is trying to say is that planter is at a different elevation you can't use it as for um, the compensatory flood storage of all the other um, fill that has been placed in FEMA flood zone. So I know it looks like it's not a lot going on, um, but typically the way I understand the regs is when you redevelop a commercial site, you have to try to make the site a little bit better. And they're, like this is just sheet flowing into the river right now and they're not giving us compensatory flood storage. So you guys can vote, you can you can 100% ignore DEP's comments, but I have a feeling that it's it, they're gonna end up appealing it if that's the case. So it's it's really up to you guys if, if you guys think DEP's comments are silly and you don't care, then you can go ahead and, and if they appeal it, they appeal it. Um, but someone on the commission will probably have, I, I will be at the meeting if that happens. Um, but otherwise, if, if you guys were going to vote tonight, I just have some small conditions um, about snow storage and snow stockpiling and signs on the fence. Yeah, I actually did see this. I forgot. Um, uh, was there a reason why though? Why did the stormwater reports not have been done? Uh, I think the information that would be, we weren't designing anything uh, in particular uh, for stormwater management. So I believe uh, that may be the reason that uh, Chris did provide a checklist, but in general, uh, the checklist says no, 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 no. You know, was there an alternative analysis? We have a small lot, it's 11,750 square feet. Um, most of it is a parking lot. Um, most of the work being done is to achieve uh, ADA and CMR uh, funereal compliance uh, and uh, the uh, second means of egress. Um, there really isn't a place for us. I do agree with uh, uh, Lucia that Lucia that the um, elevation where the planter was removed is uh, higher than the elevation at at the uh, back of the property where the uh, where the property meets the brook, um, but um, there was never a discussion of uh, providing any kind of underground tank. Uh, to there was never a discussion of digging, uh, in, you know, that close to the brook to provide some sort of uh, storage. So, is, I, is I, that plant is that planted deeper? Is that no, the planter was actually elevated. So if you take the planter out, aren't you providing compensatory storage? But it's, uh, I think uh, Lu Lu uh, Lucia is pointing out to us that the elevation of the planter uh, is higher than the elevation where we're putting the columns down at the back of the property. Oh, yeah. Jack? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, this is Chris Mello from Eastern Land Survey. Uh, if I may, the uh, just as a clarification, the 100-year flood elevation, I believe, is 27 in this area. And the planter took out uh, flood storage, uh, compensatory storage, for elevation 23, which is at where the parking lot level is at that point, to the top of the planter. So those columns are going up from ground level past elevation 27. So the planter was compensatory storage for the level between 23 and 27, uh, which all those columns do go through. 
but the columns also go from uh, 23 lower down to uh, 20 and 18. That's the compensatory storage uh, that is not retrieved through that. But the planter definitely has uh, bearing in this. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Well, so if we do the report, you could address that. Uh, the re that is um, that is in the chart, and that is uh, a part of the narrative. Uh, through the elevations uh, that we've gone through there from 21 through 27 and the portions of material that's been added and then the portion of the planter that provides uh, compensatory storage for some of that. But we can't get compensatory storage uh, from uh, elevation uh, 20 to 23 uh, because there's nothing to take out. And that, that's shown on the chart in the upper left. I mean, it's basically, as, as Jack said, we've got an existing uh, site that's uh, pretty much impervious between either roofed building or paving. And uh, Mr. Rogerio in his uh, permitting to uh, change the use here has uh, put in uh, several things into the property, columns, uh, a spiral staircase, a, uh, a ramp that is not solid. It's, it's on uh, posts, if you will. Uh, to comply with this and uh, minimally invaded uh, the, the flood zone, if you will. Uh, but there's no way of comp uh, compensating for those uh, levels because there's nothing to take out. And the stormwater uh, right now, it comes from uh, Chestnut Street from the sidewalk towards the brook as it's always done. And the construction uh, that's going on for these uh, posts and ramps uh, do not impede that sheet drainage and won't change it, doesn't change uh, the volume or the uh, quality. And so really nothing changes. I mean, the volume is very small, um, sure. but is there any way we could drop the grade of the uh, paved area behind the building a little bit? Yeah, but that gets, if I do that, that gets me from elevation 20 to say 18. That doesn't give me the compensatory I'm looking for between 20 and 23. That's the real area I can't serve. Yeah, I don't know what to do. I mean, this is a situation that, you know, you, we're going to encounter more and more uh, because you've got an, uh, quite a few properties uh, in, the, in the downtown that as we uh, go through them and renovate them and change uses, they're going to need to be brought up to a code and they're going to end up needing, uh, you know, a pier, a footing, and there's uh, there's got to be some way to do this. You can't just... Uh, or I shouldn't say you can't, but we shouldn't just be taking these buildings and say you can't do anything to them. Uh, there's got to be some uh, some leeway in there to uh, allow these uh, these necessities for code to take place. If I added a planter or anything to the rear, it, would that be the compensatory storage? No, we'd be looking to take material out as opposed out, to out of the way. Okay, yeah. All right. sorry. Okay, and any suggestion we're open to? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm fine with doing more. Like, if if green space and buffering will will suit it, I'll put that anywhere you folks would like me to put it to to help with drain it with stormwater drainage. I'll do whatever I I have to. The, the planet that was like, like rotted, it was. Now there's not an issue of removal. I mean, the mm -hmm. removal of the planter was a good thing. Yeah, it, removing the plant that doesn't hurt you, it doesn't help though. Okay. And it, you know, where the 
property ends and the book uh, Brooke begins, uh, there is virtually no bank that is not the actual uh, uh, block wall that that lines both sides of the brook. Maybe we have to have another discussion with DEP about that. I mean, short, short of reducing the footprint of the building, just for, just for a small volume. But I, you know, I, I, I um, respect the concern there. I mean, the city's paying, spending millions in downtown to mitigate flooding, and then, you know, here we, here we are taking flood storage away, ever so small. But like Chris says, you know, these all add up. And well, we did gain flood storage when the city removed the uh, building in front of us, but it's not ours. <laughs> <laughs> I think DEP is, um, is looking for a stormwater report. Um, I mean, it's great that we, we got, um, you know, the checklist, but if anyone looked at the checklist, um, I mean, unfortunately, like most of the time when people send me a checklist like this and they're, they can't meet the standards, they'll add in on the checklist and in the report, why? And it's just, I mean, it's not really filled out. It, it's the, if you guys looked at it, I mean, it, there's, a couple areas where he could have just wrote in and explained to us some things like standard eight construction period pollution prevention and erosion and sedimentation control it's saying that they need a narrative which we have a narrative um, we need a construction period operation and maintenance plans name of person entity responsible for plan compliance you know all the things that go into i mean the work's already started so um Honestly, hearing that the sheet flow, which I know comes from the street and goes into the brook, everything's stockpiled along the brook. So the sheet flow is coming from the street and it's hitting the stockpiles and it's going in. So, I mean, I think DEP is just asking for a little more information, um, like a stormwater report. Um, and I don't think they're asking that much, but but I, I they might stick their gun, they might stick to their guns with this flood volume, loss, and compensatory flood storage. I'm not sure. I didn't really get into a big conversation with her. She just sent it and made sure that I told the uh, property owner and the attorney that they need more information and everything needs to be mailed. Like, so they're looking for more information. Yeah, I, I think it's up to you guys if you want to close it. It's ultimately always your decision, but DEP has the right to intervene if Want to. I think DEP's weighed in on this. I don't think we should just disregard their concerns. I think we should provide the more the additional information that they need. Uh, and and um, and if you explain it well, then um, then perhaps we can um, you know, maybe get, make a suggestion or something. I mean, the, the you know form. Form three says you says you're including a copy of the stormwater report. Did you did? Number seven says yes, right? In the application, yes, it does. Uh, why don't we try to just why don't we try to move forward and and com complete this and get more data to them and. Uh, I think you made a good case about, you know, what, what can we do? I mean, uh, short of what I said, reduce the footprint of the building, but that's that's a large task. Uh, and a costly one. So that would be, you know, very costly to do something like that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I didn't hear exactly what you said. You said that something would be very costly. If, if you wanted to reduce the footprint of the building. Oh, yes. If there no. was a, a, some part of the building, um, you know, a breezeway or something that you could reduce, uh, take it out and make up the volume there, but that can be cost prohibitive or very expensive. 
Um, and you know, but maybe dem you know to demonstrate what can or cannot be done. I think if you get more data to them, they could digest it better, as opposed to kind of like saying, "Well, where is all the information? You didn't give me any." So I think we should continue this. Yeah, maybe an alternative analysis. I mean, everything you said, you know, they, uh, all the things that um, everyone said tonight, um, like Chris Mello, what you said about, you know, this is a historic building. Uh, we need to be able to to let people, you know, do whatever commercial they want. Um, but unfor it's unfortunate that the work's already been started and partially complete. And I think that might be the big trigger with DEP was that it's an after the fact filing in FEMA flood zone and riverfront and in an area that is known to flood uh, as um, someone mentioned the building in front was demoed and it was demoed because it used to flood. I bought my wedding dress there and she lost like all her wedding dresses. Um, so it's just something for you guys to think about. I think if they could submit more information, alternative analysis, um, a stormwater report and on the checklist, maybe like explain a, a couple of bits, like highlight in red in places where you can't do things. Um, that I think that's just what they're looking for. Um, but I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they will appeal this and make him take everything out of the flood zone. I have no idea. I mean, we all know the site because we've been there so many times. You know, we were there for not that well, a couple of years back. There was a project just across the water there. I think. Uh, <clears throat> yep. So I, I, uh, my, if you, I don't know what the rest of the commission feels, but. Um, you know, I think we should continue this and, and, and get more data, more information. I'll make the motion to continue this. You guys okay with that, Jack? Oh, yeah, we have to be. Yeah, <laughs> okay. All right, and a second on that? Second. Okay. Was that Melissa or Amanda? Melissa. Melissa, so I'm going to go ahead and do a roll call. Chairman Rizzo. Yes. Vice Chairman Comac. Yes. Commissioner Feld Canton. Yes. Commissioner Green. Yes. Commissioner Vivaldi. Yes. Commissioner Athis. Yes. All right, so the item is continued asking for more information. And the next meeting is. March 17 or March 20, uh, 24th, March yes. 24th. Yep. The 24th. We can't have it on the 17th. We're all Irish at heart, right? Correct. Ooh, Thank geez. you. I have a question. Um, on this one. Yeah. Um, just here's my, the only question I have is, uh, in order to, in a situation like this, where there's really nothing you can possibly do to create any additional compensatory storage, are we talking about pervious versus impervious surfaces or just elevations? Elevation. Okay. So, this, so, okay. so there's nothing we can do then. Yeah. Yeah, I think if he just if he explains it in the narrative, that'll be that'll take care of it, and then we'll be able to get this going. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Hey. Okay. Uh, Next item on the agenda is item number nine under notice of an intent. Public hearing on a notice of intent submitted by Joseph Salvaggio, the owner. Proposed project is the construction of a single family home, attached garage, driveway, and utilities. 
lawn and stormwater features. The property is known as 72 Lake Street, Map 45, Lot 62 in the City of Phoenix. Lot 62 in the City of Um, I have promoted Joe Salvaggio to a panelist, so he should be able to unmute himself. Um, a city councilor has also is also in the meeting tonight. I don't know if he's going to want to speak, um, but uh, Councilor Mark O'Neill is in the audience tonight. I forgot to mention that at the beginning. Hi, can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm Joseph Salvaggio for 73 Lake Street in Peabody. Um, this project was in front of the board last June. Um, and we were approved last June for a modification. However, in the appeal period, some of the abutters had, had appealed the decision and it went to the DEP. Um, the DEP held a meeting last November and a site visit and we walked the property and in their letter, they stated that they felt as though the modification should have been a new NOI, um, basically saying that it was filed incorrectly. So that's why I'm here tonight. I filed the new NOI. Um, the approved plan that was approved back in June of 2020 is exactly the same. Nothing has been changed. Nothing has been modified. And I'm hoping tonight we can move forward with the new NOI and get an approval. Okay. <clears throat> so, yeah, this Paul, we approved this plan um, before, but last year, uh, or with the appeal, they felt that, Master T felt that it was, um, it was a minor change. And therefore, for they, wanted a uh, new filing but fact is it doesn't change anything this is the plan that we approved last time um, so we have a new filing with the same plan yes that's correct the plan is exactly the same nothing was changed or modified and all the changes that were made last time that we uh, requested, you made, um, you addressed uh, the concerns of um, public services on several accounts. And to the greatest extent practicable, uh, we felt that um, project would be in compliance. So um, I have the opinion I have the same I have the same uh, um, feelings from last time. Uh, I don't know about the rest of the commission. Uh, does anybody else want to speak on this? Yeah, I mean it's the same plan. We've already approved it. Uh, I read the DEP letter for the uh, that basically said that. The DEP didn't get, you know, weigh in on a project at all. All they did was say that it was too large a change. You need to file a new NOI. Um, I, I was on the project before. I didn't see that, you know, he made all the modifications we asked. I don't see how we can, I don't see why, why or how we can make a change, you know, make it uh, different this time. It is, a, it is a single family home. Uh, so it's not a commercial property. It's a single family home. So um, my position is that we would uh, prove this also. There are numerous um, people in the audience who would like to speak. Okay. I just want to let you know before you close it there is it this one is a public hearing so they definitely need to be able to speak yeah yeah mm -hmm. 
So just there's a, um, I remember there was quite a bit of discussion on this project um, over the times we met. So I understand the folks have the same position they had before, um, but we addressed those and uh, we mitigated to the greatest extent practicable uh, with the uh, stormwater features uh, on site. So I don't, I know that the neighbors are going to um, mention the same concerns as before, but it doesn't change the fact that um, that I think still think that the project um, meets the guidelines, meets the requirements. Do well, any of the other commissions have anything to say on this? I can uh, confirm. Maybe, um, I, I see Mark O'Neill's uh, is, I don't know if you want to speak on this matter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, I just wanted to, to take part and listen to it and, and see, hear what the residents have to say. I, I've attended the previous meeting, so I'm familiar with the project, but as it's a new NOI, I just want to take part in it. Thank you. Okay. Um, so if there's, I'm sorry, I mean, If the audience wants to speak, they need to raise their hand, I guess. There's nobody, no other uh, commissioners want to speak on this matter. Then, Lucia, if you want to open it up to some questions. Um, so just, um, I, I'm sure you guys read what I wrote, um, and I understand that it's it's the commission's belief that this is meeting all the regulations and the standards. Um, but I, I, I do want to say that, the you know, the commission, you guys are a voting entity, and you're supposed to, you know, be like Switzerland and try to come for a compromise and make the neighbors happy and as well as, you know, have the property owner be able to work on their property. And I just want to reiterate, there was, I believe it was five households, a matter of 10 people who live in this neighborhood who were extremely concerned to the fact that they did appeal it. So I'm just concerned that we're going to go into a Groundhog Day that if you guys don't ask for any changes at all that this is going to get appealed again and it's going to be held up in an appeal period again because they have they do have that right um so i just was hoping that possibly maybe someone on the commission would ask for a revision or a scale down um but again it's up to you guys i just wanted to make my my statement um so the first person i am going to promote just, to well, Lucia, just based on what you're saying, keep in mind that, that it was already appealed and Mass DOT already went there. They've already looked at it. They did not say anything about the project except the fact that the project was too large. Yeah, they would, to, they, that's, that's not what they would say in the amendment because it was an amendment request. It wasn't an order of conditions. And yet they could appeal at this time and DEP would, would you know, cancel out the appeal. I mean, that's a possibility as well. But DEP was only ruling on if that was an amendment. That is it. They, Bruce, that's all they were ruling on from what I understand. Bruce, Bruce, my, question, Bruce, Jim, my question is simple. When, when an NOI is filed, DEP comes in and makes comments. Correct. Was, was there any comments made on this? Um, well, there was, I just got comments today for, for, um, for 10 Chestnut. So I don't know if there are any comments yet. They're not on the website. 10 Chestnut wasn't even on the website. Alicia, the circuit writer, emailed it to me and said, pass this on to the owner. I don't have their email. Um, so the, the answer would be, I have, I do not know if they have any comments. Okay. I, I, I misunderstood. I thought I thought they're supposed to, when they get a filing, they're supposed to look at it and have the comments you know, right. done ready by, most of the time they have the comments ready by the time we have the meeting, correct? Uh, sometimes, a lot of the times actually I get comments like two days after the meeting and there's so, it. So it's just, a, it's just a comment, it's not a finding? They didn't give an official response? Uh, I can pull it up if you want to give me a second. I, don't, I didn't see it. You could. I appreciate that. It should be on here. 
Okay. Could I make a quick comment? Yes. So just, just to reiterate something, this original modification I had filed back in October of 2019. And we went through a series of five different meetings. And throughout those meetings, we made changes all along the way. Um, we took into consideration the abutters' concerns. We put in a storm management system that is far beyond anything that a single family house would need. Um, so my, my point is that I just wanted to reiterate that we took, we spent five meetings of changes and moving the house forward and doing um, buffer zone enhancements and different things. So this wasn't like we did a modification and boom, one meeting, it was uh, approved. Um, so, you know, throughout the course from October of 19 till June of 2020, we had made modifications and, and took into consideration everybody's concerns and try to work with the best things we could to make everybody somewhat happy and try to make it, everybody feel comfortable about it. All right, thank you. Lucia, do, do they have any comments or no? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. I'm, lo I'm looking for the appeal. They, they, they didn't have comments um, earlier today, but as I said, I literally just got an email for 10 chestnut today. So I don't, I, I don't know. I'm trying to find the, um, if you guys still want me to look for the appeal from DEP, I am having issues because I'm running a meeting and it's a little difficult to scroll my computer. But if you want me to find that, I'll find it. If not, I'll stop looking for it. I'd like to. I would like to know because, I mean, if, if Matt, if DEP said to do A, B, C, and D, then I would be, I'd say, okay, let's do it. We need to do that. But if they had no comment at the site meeting, they they wouldn't. That's the not fact what that they, they, the fact that they thought that the project was too great a change to just be to do as an amendment. Um, there's, there's a big difference. Yeah, that meeting had nothing to, it, it had to, it, exactly, it had only to do with if that was an amendment. So now they're looking at it because they never, when you send an amendment to DEP, I can't tell you if anyone actually looks at it. So someone will actually review this this time around. So why are we here tonight then? Why, why are we here for a public hearing if Ms. Mass DOT hasn't responded? Why why would they you guys can you guys can always vote without Mass DEP comments. You don't have to even listen to Mass DEP's comments if you don't want to. They're just a guide I guideline. I, I respect their experience and their um, their knowledge. So it, it's important to me. When, mass, when the project's appeal and Mass DOT reviews it, it's important to me to know what their finding is or what their comments are. And if they're not finished with their comments, then we shouldn't be here tonight. That's how I feel. Because I'm an, I'm of the opinion to approve this project. I have still have no. Um, I would, I'm, my position is that the project can still move forward as as proposed. But if Mass DOT has a different as feels differently, then I want to know what, what their concerns are. I concur with that completely. That's exactly what I, that's exactly how I feel. I, I don't see we approved it before. He made a lot of modifications as far as stormwater was concerned considered. Um, he did a he, I believe he did test pits twice. Yeah. And um but at that point, um, and, and I, you know, I understand the, they appealed it and they said it was too big for modification. Okay. That's, oh. But uh, I would think at, at that point when we fired, when the, you have, when you have a site didn't lie, that they would make a comment if they didn't want, uh, if they didn't want to do that. Here. This is this is the um, the superseding amended order of conditions from DEP. 
What was the date of this, Lucia? Oh, December 21. Okay. Can you? Well, I don't. I don't know how fast you guys. I don't know how much everyone wants to read. I, so. I, don't, I don't read that fast. <laughs> um, and they. He does also have. Um, it says right in the second paragraph, the last sentence. Um, he still does have a valid order of conditions right now. And I think it's actually valid until October, not September. Right, but that, that was for the smaller house. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can go up a little bit more. You want me to move it a little more? Yeah. Just out of curiosity, what's the size of the lot itself? The lot is the lot is just under one acre, it's 42,000 square feet. Oh. Is that the end of it? Yeah, I'm reading. Yeah, okay. That last paragraph says a lot. This is going to, you have to file the new NOI, which he did. No, it says that that file is not work approved until it should you have any questions. Again, I, I don't, I, I did read this, I, I read this before. I, I think it was sent to us or I, I asked for it or, um, but it, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't change anything. We we already approved it as it was, and now we filed a new NOI. So unless DEP chimes in and says, no, there's a problem with this, we've already approved it under those conditions. I don't know how I don't know how we can change that. I don't I don't know how we why we should change that. Um, did you guys want to open it to the members of the public? I mean, I just think they're all there's five of them here. Well, and let, let them, I, I have no problem. Let them speak. Yes. Well, I mean, you have to, but I know they're waiting to speak. They've been, had their hand up for a while. Okay. I mean, as a commission, we have the we have the ability to, to 
to to make changes to this, but I feel that the that the petitioner is met, you know, the requirements that we asked them to do, which are, which are over and above um, what is required for a single family home by law. I mean, naturally, if Joe wanted to make the site of a building a little smaller, or the garage a little smaller, smaller, we'd certainly, you know, say fine. We would approve that, you know, and maybe that makes the neighbors happy. But I think that he's, um, it's a, you know, the, the garage part's a slab on grade. Yeah, he's taking all the roof run up and he's putting it into the into the um, uh, stormwater management system. So, uh, you know, we can listen to the um, folks. Okay, I'm going to first um, promote Rose to a panelist. I'm just going to promote everyone to a panelist at this point. I'm assuming they all want to talk. Um, so that way they are able to change their video to on and speak if they want to, but it should be through the chair, of course. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, well, I, I was reading the same DEP letter and that last paragraph um, said something about it increased the impacts and it impacts the wetlands, the size of the, the scope of that building in the house. I mean, you've got five neighbors here who say this house is too big for that parcel of land because of the wetlands, because of, uh, you know, what it's, what we, ha the problems we have with our property because of flooding, etc. I mean, what's going to happen if our property starts to flood again? We've been in a drought the testing was done during a drought. Um, this this last uh, snowstorm just flooded the school area again. I don't know if anybody noticed it. Um, but you know, our concerns are our property. These are these are our life investments, and no one seems to care on this conservation board. I mean, honestly, what do we do if this impacts our, impacts our properties negatively? There's five families. Is Mr. Salvaggio willing to put money into escrow to make sure that the next five year, years our properties are impacted by his building? Absolutely, Absolutely not. not. Okay, mm -hmm. there you go. Also, when we tried to repair our driveway this uh, two summers ago, Mr. Salvaggio was the first one uh, calling the Conservation Commission on us and trying to stop us trying to fix our property. No, that's not true. That's true, Joe. You and, and Pat Botto were front and center, shutting down our project had, that we paid to have so that our property would not flood. Well, that's irrelevant to this, but I had that's nothing right. To do. It is irrelevant, but you know, this is the type of neighbor you are. I'm just just showing your character. I think others would would disagree with that. Well, I'm sorry. This this project, the size of this house is going to impact this this area negatively. That's my final uh, thoughts on this. I spoke with another commissioner from a different city, and he was a, a commissioner on a con conservation board, and he couldn't understand how this conservation commission could go ahead with the project with five neighbors saying that, you know, we're worried. This is going to affect us adversely. Would you be agreeable, would the five neighbors be agreeable to a smaller uh, dwelling? Absolutely. There was um, a permitting process that uh, allowed like a 2,800 square, 2, square foot home to be built there. 
And then Mr. Salvaggio came back with this uh, 9,000 uh, square foot revision. It's, it's not a 9,000 square foot home. And, and just to reiterate what I've said in the past. Um, what is it, Joe? Tell us the, th the final dimensions, please. Th this, this house size does not require any relief from the Board of Appeals. It's a project that can be done as of right. So I'm not looking for relief. We're talking about an acre of land. That's, so, that's, that borders wetland and is wetland, Joe. I'm just saying the size of the house is within zoning regulations. What is the square footage of the house, Joe? The proposed square footage. I don't have it exactly in front of me, but I, I believe it's about 6,700 total with the garage space. Uh, we were told that it was 9,000 square feet, unless you scaled it down. No, that, that's incorrect. That Somebody's been throwing that number around for a while, but that's not the right number, no. 100 by 4,000 for the house, 100 by 40, right? Yeah, it's like... The is 100 by 40. Now, that's you got to remember, this house is a is a one-level home. It's it's not a, a two-level home. It's, a, it's, it's a, a ranch with a basement area under the living area only. Right, but the, the garage area is four thousand. Based on the plan, I'm looking at. Well, yeah, he has it broken up that way, but it's like it's four thousand. I believe the house was six uh, twenty eight hundred for round numbers. It's twenty seven and change. So that's slab. all. I so the slab is eighty nine and a half from front to to, to back. Patty, oh, okay. I saw something in that letter letter about fifty seven hundred square feet. I think. I, I now, guess, that now that I'm looking at the plan, I, I guess my my question to the to the abut is: uh, What are your concerns? He's putting all the water that would be coming onto the property that will be it's going into the ground. Well, if the house is not there, all the water goes into the ground. So. Other than you don't want to look at a big house, how is that impacting anything of the neighbors? And if and, and again, I'm I'm just trying to get a handle on. Oh, he's he's put in all these. He's put in. I mean, there's one, two, three. If I'm looking at this correctly. There's three Caltech systems. Yes, there's three different ones. And just to bring something up that was mentioned in the meetings when um, a couple of the neighbors were concerned about flooding, you know, the board members even asked the neighbors about flooding. And, you know, the comments were, well, it, it, we flooded twice in the past 30 years. That was one of the comments made by one of the abutters. So, I mean, my question is, with all this rain we had yesterday, you know, on top of ice and different things where the water couldn't go into the ground, did any of those neighbors flood? Because there's your answer. It's not going to flood. And it's not going to flood with a house there. Because we, we've taken all the water and going to put it into the ground ahead of time. So there's no runoff. It's not going to go into anybody's yards. And, and I mean, some it's some of these neighbors, I mean, literally, we're, we're 300 plus feet away from, you know, the, the two behind me, we're three to 400 feet away. 4,000 square feet, the, the garage portion is a slab. Correct. So it's just it's just a slab on, on top of the ground. So Correct. So what's the total building? What is it? I mean, you must know. You're, you're a contract. You just don't say, yeah. I don't know. I've answered that question. I just said around 60, 67, 67 6,800 square feet. It's 67 and change, you know, 67, 70 or something like that. 4,000 square feet of that is the garage, which is just the slab on on the ground. Correct. And that's, the roof, that's what I'm on. saying. The, the four-car four garage plus the building. Yeah. And I believe that didn't uh, didn't the uh, gentleman from DEP say that the, that the uh, garage or the, it was abutting the wetlands or it would impact the wetlands? No. I, I, I never spoke to the gentleman from DEP.
overwhelming around here. I, I'd like to hear from the rest of the neighbors. They don't really understand how why they feel this 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 house is going to affect their properties. I have promoted everyone um, to a panelist, so um, if I mean they can still raise their hand, and then Chairman Rizzo, you can see their name and tell them they can speak, or they can unmute themselves. However, you want to do it. Hi, good evening. This is Carrie Orowski from 5 Mead Street. Um, I just want to ask a question on the summary that the DEP sent at the end, the last paragraph, just to clarify where they say that based on review of the plans and documents, it's Mass DEP's opinion that the changes proposed to the project not only increase the scope of the project as approved under the 2018 OOC but also increase impacts to wetland resource areas in the associated 100 foot buffer zone. Therefore, it is Mass DEP's opinion that the charges to the proposed project will require the filling of a new notice of intent. It is Mass DEP's position that this denial serves to protect the interest of the act. The denial does not apply to the work approved under the 2018 OOC. So the original um, submission, which was 2018, it sounds like a, everybody on the call is going back to what was submitted in 2020. And then they're revising it again. They're saying they're not in denial of what was proposed in 2018, which I believe was 2,700 or 2,800 square feet with a 70 foot, um, 75 feet away from Lake Street. So that I need to understand what what we what 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 don't we understand here? It doesn't sound like the DEP is agreeing with the change. Hey, the chair, can I take a poke? At least, at least that's saying. that's what it sounds like is their opinion. I think what they're saying is that I mean, anytime. Who's anytime, speaking, please? Excuse me. Who's speaking? Uh, me, Mike. Oh, thank you. Um, so the site is pretty much entirely in the buffer zone. Um, so the, when they when they talk like that, it's you know anytime you work in the buffer zone, it's because buffer zone is resource is considered part of resource. So anytime you do work in there, it's impacted. Uh, the question is, you know, what kind of impacts are they? Uh, so I think that's that's the overall. Um, when they use that, when they use that term, so I mean, there's many projects, houses that we build that the, the entire house is in the buffer zone. There's nothing, to, and that's the way it is. There's not, you can't stop that. You can't help that. Uh, people have a right to build on their property. So we try to do what we can to work within the confines of the. Wetland Protection Act and and how the site the, the site is already a cleared site. It's already been defoliated, uh, it's been graded and dug up and regraded and dug up again. Um, I I guess I'm just going back again where they're saying that their proposed project. So it's it's where they say that the position is the denial service to protect the interests of the act. What do they mean by that? They're saying that they're denying because they are, it serves to protect the interests of the act. How is that gonna impact everything? I mean, there's some, some harsh, not harsh words, but some serious verbiage in that last paragraph. Can I take a poke at this one, Michael? Yeah. So what they're saying is there's a wetlands protection act and they the change made was larger than what they feel is a minor change and the act really allows for minor changes so 
they felt it was more than a minor change and that they're trying to protect the the act. Correct. Uh, they didn't say that they, they didn't say that they didn't make give an opinion one way or another, which I wish they did. Wish they had. Or, or if they had, or if they still are going to. That's why I said I want to know what DEP weighed in. So in the statement though, it says it is Mass DEP's opinion. Mm -hmm. that the changes proposed to the project not only increase the scope of the project That's as right. approved under the 2018 OOC, but also increases the project and it impacts the wetland resources and areas and the associated 100-foot buffer zone. How much clearer can they be on their opinion? Yeah, but the opinion is... So the impact to the buffer zone is that it's 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 taking away uh, grass and brush and things like that, and you're putting in uh, a building. So that's that's an impact. Doesn't doesn't mean it's a negative impact, but it's an impact to the buffer zone. All the work on this site is an impact to the buffer zone. The question is, what do we do to to um, uh, manage the stormwater? on a site like this because we recognize and we recognize you folks what it's like to, i get water too and it, i recognize it we're trying to mitigate potential flooding to people's homes and by by doing what the petitioner did and putting this stormwater management facility on the site to collect and and to collect the water and, and keep it within two feet of high groundwater based on all the data he did that but there's no guarantee at the end of the day everybody's making great efforts but what happens if those great efforts fail well nobody and can we all and nobody. we are all we all perish with the impact then what happens because my insurance company tells me i don't live in a flood zone and i am not insured It's not I, a flood zone. I understand where you're going. I understand what everybody is saying. But at the end of the day, there's no guarantee. And no one wants to take the responsibility of what happens to five homes on this property. We've all been here 37, 40 years or more. And at the end of the day, no one's telling us that we have some kind of guarantee. Put yourself in our shoes. So if he doesn't build a house and it, it, it floods, who's fault? I'm not saying if he doesn't build a house. I'm just saying it's it's an it's it's a it's a huge scope and project. It's a huge scope and footage. Sherry, with all due respect, excuse me. My name is Kerry, not Sherry. Okay, Kerry, with Thank all you. due respect. Okay. Joe, this I'm not here to argue with you. I'm just here to show the facts and to just basically state how I feel. You've, you've had the floor for quite some time. So this is now really? a chance for us to be able to speak. And yeah, I, I just wanted to make a comment that, you know, again, I'll, I'll bring up the distance between where this building's going to be, this home's going to be, and your property is. I mean, you're one of the furthest points away. It's, it's almost impossible to impact your property. I mean, look okay. at the drawing. Look at the drawing and, and you'll see it. Like I said, I'm more concerned about what are the guarantees? How is it going to impact us? And I'm not the only one on this call. I'm sure someone else wants to, you know, basically speak up that's closer to the property line. But like I said, I just feel like we, we want to understand what are the guarantees that we have? Right. The, the, everybody's making great efforts, but at the end of the day, if something happens, what what happens? Yeah, I agree with Kerry. Um, I'm Debbie Del Vecchio, and I guess we would be mostly impacted by this. We probably the closest to Joe. Um, so again, we would like to know who's going to be responsible. We don't want to be collateral damage, and somebody's going to be held responsible. And it's not going to be the first you're going to hear of it if something happens. So what what is the plan? Everybody has a disaster plan. What is yours? Well, we, we've taken the right precautions, so there isn't going to be a disaster. It's a precaution, but what no. happens if it doesn't well, work? Well, listen, there's no guarantees in life on certain things. I mean, we, we've taken the best engineered 
uh, approach to this thing. And we're very confident that it's going to work. And I mean, again, to go back to the meetings that, that taken place over the past year and a half, it was your husband who was asked from the chairman, how often does your house flood? And his response was twice in the past 30 years. So I, I think we're blowing things out of proportion. You're making it sound like your house floods every other week. It, it, it doesn't, that's not the reality here. I mean, your own husband answered the question twice in the past 30 years. So, I mean, you know, I don't know what else to say. We've taken the best approach. We've taken, I mean, this isn't something we just drew up. We did a lot of research. We did test holes twice. We had a soil analyst there. We've done everything and more to prevent, you know, a catastrophe. I don't want a problem just like anybody else doesn't want a problem. So, I mean, everything the chair, the, the commission has wanted or the neighbors have spoken about, we've done. And that's all I can say. But it was your husband who said about the flooding. You know, I wanted to bring that up because it's the truth. Joe, all we want at the end of the day is a smaller scoped house. We, we don't mind that you build, but a 6,000 square foot house jeopardizes the character all of the drowning houses. Well, I disagree with that. Well, well, you can disagree I mean, with it because, <laughs> but that, you know, the 2,800 square foot house that was originally um, granted, uh, permitted, is, is what we're looking for. That will be, you know, the blueprint of this neighborhood. Joe, is there any chance we can reduce the size of the garage? I, 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 I really, I'm not open to that. Joe, what are you open to? What can you do to make us as neighbors happy? We want you to build. It's not that we don't. I, I've spent. We over, want our property values to go up, not down. Your property values you go it. nothing but up. <laughs> exactly. I mean, but, you know, it's, it's also well, compromise. There's also potential uh, compromise to our investments. No, I mean, I've spent two years just about on this project. And I've made a lot of changes along the way. I've tried to do everything I could. Like I said, changes the house, increases the house the is within zoning regulations. It's not like I'm proposing something that isn't within the zoning regulations. So that's what I want to stick to. Could the, could the garage be a little smaller, Joe? I, I, really, I really don't want to change it at this point, no. I, I mean, like I said, this has been almost two years in the making. Right, right. So and the test, pits, the test pits that were done, they were done with no representation from the committee, shouldn't there have been? Well, everybody was invited to go. The city engineer was invited to go. Uh, but again, we hired an independent soil analyst who made a report that was submitted to the city, submitted to the conservation committee uh, on two occasions. At the, board, at the commission's request, we did it in, um, let's see, November of 2000. I think 18 or 19, 19, I believe. No, yeah. And then it, that was in the fall where we had a tremendous amount of rain in a, a, a rainy, rainy November. Then we did it again in March to see if the springtime had changed the levels. Um, and again, we did two reports and, and we had an independent person. But we don't know exactly where those test pits were, were, were done on the property. Well, they, there we go. Oh, we, were in a, we were in a drought for the last year. Well, I don't know about that. They were done in November, like I said. Um, I believe it was of, of 19, yeah, 2019 and of March in 2020. And when we did it in March, the day before it had rained like two plus inches of rain. Yeah. That all through the night. And that next morning we did the test. And I said, this is going to be the true telltale of, of where we're at. And it's all in the report. Nothing had changed. So I don't know what else to say. I mean, I, I've made every effort and done everything we were asked to do and even beyond that. Let's keep in mind, this was already approved by the commission. This isn't something new. I mean, it's the same plan. 
Ask, exactly. It's too big for the area. Can I ask a question? Is this this is a single one story house? Yes, sir. Do you ever consider making a two story house? Uh, no, I, I'd like to do a one level. That's what we're looking to do. Okay. All right. Through the, through the chair, Michael, if uh, you could help me. So yes. Did Mike have a question? I think we just lost him, but um, Councillor O'Neill has had his hand up patiently for a bit. Okay. Thank you. This is uh, city, I'm Ward 6 Councillor Mark O'Neill. I live at 21 Antrim Road for the record. And through the chair, I just wanted to make, I know there's other people and certainly more important than me because they're the abutters. Uh, I just wanted to make a couple quick comments in that, you know, I've attended a lot of these meetings regarding this property. And, you know, it's my opinion that Mr. Salvaggio has done a lot of work in terms of trying to respond to the commission's, you know, concerns as well as the abutters. Uh, I'll make the, the general uh, phraseology that I'd love to see Mr. Salvaggio, you know, come closer, try to, you know, work with the neighbors and abutters with the size of the property. That's something that I'd like to see. Um, but I guess I just wanted to comment. I, I think when I listened to the previous public hearing regarding 10 Chestnut Street, it uh, worried me that, um, you know, the DEP had added some comments almost up to the date of the, the hearing. And, and, you know, I certainly wouldn't think it's, you know, out of the question to maybe make sure as the applicants who, you know, the, the number of uh, abutters, if you will, the, the five or six homes, uh, they sent, uh, as you all know, an appeal letter to DEP regarding the approval. And in addition to just the notice of the uh, intent appeal, there were a number of other allegations or challenges made in that appeal. And I just would hate to have something get approved and then have DEP send a, a letter or, you know, findings or something on this property. So, I, you know, I certainly want to let people, uh, abutters and other people uh, comment, but uh, I just would hate to see them make, you know, I'd rather have them weigh in if there's something they're going to do. And I just don't know if it might make sense to continue this to the next month, but that's all yeah. I should say at this comment this time. Thanks. Yeah, Mark, I'm on the, I'm on the same opinion that um, I would um, like to reach out to DEP and, and, you know, the, the, land, the letter is a letter that I'm familiar with seeing on many projects over the years, you know, and, um, you know, tell us there's something that's not right. Uh, and, and, um, and I would not want them to respond sometime after we've made a decision um, to, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a negative way. So I would like to reach out to DEP and ask them um, uh, to, you know, discuss this. Because I, I know that, I know it's a big building, but that's not my job. My job isn't to tell somebody what kind of building they can build and how big it is. My job is to, is to, look out for the resource area and is it being, are we doing what we can to mitigate any impacts? And this site, although the building is big and I, I understand what people want to look at when they look out their window and so forth, but that's not why we're here. That's not my job. That's planning, that's community development, that's zoning. That's not my job. Our job is to protect the wetlands. Okay, and there's guidelines that that tell us what to do, and we have followed the guidelines. Um, uh, the guidelines say that this is this project, this individual property is exempt from meeting stormwater guidelines. It's a single-family resident; you don't even have to be here for that. Just but I understand what the people. I know what the people are going through, and I understand that. Um, but I would like to reach out to DEP to get. So more information on that and to discuss it a little bit. Um, I would like nothing better than have us than have Joe say that he'll make the garage smaller, but that's not my place. Well, I, 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 Mike, if I could chime in for a second, I mean, I don't think that's going to matter. I, I, I really don't. I mean, you just said it. I don't even need stormwater management, you know, by 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 the rules. 
Um, through the chair, I do not believe that's a correct statement, actually, because um, okay. Winona water treatment plant is right there. Um, a reservoir is there. So this would be considered a critical area, I believe. So they're well, that's actually- why, That's why we would maintain, we wanted to make sure that the uh, stormwater management can um, uh, handle the water and be have a, a two foot separation. How much DEP did I, I just we did. But, but, just but, but if, someone was, if someone was to look at the regulations, the, the, the very first thing they say is it can be exempt. We chose not to take that because that's I we have that ability. We are, as a commission, we can make that determination and make that decision. We did that. We did that. And Joe's done a lot of um, mitigation measures on the site. Um, right. I would, my, I, just wish you, I would just wish you'd make the garage smaller, but. Um, okay. Well, my, my question is, you know, I'm a little confused because, you know, it was my understanding and, you know, I've listened to many meetings and been at many meetings. Usually the DEP would comment before time. I you know, when I, when I sent out, when I sent out all my notices to a butters and I sent my certified mail to the DEP, I mean, by now they would have commented. Not um, necessarily. No, this they, is, well, this is I mean, good. I mean, I don't know who's speaking, but I mean, typically every project I see, Lucia usually comments that, okay, DEP said this, 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 and this. It happened when I originally filed. So, you know, I'm a little confused why all of a sudden there's no comments and and we have to wait. But I mean, if but that's I mean, the way you want to approach it, that's okay. But I'm just saying that's, it's just confusing to me. I, they, you know, they, they did comment. They wrote a letter and... Um, right, that letter was back in in December, so yeah. it's you know literally two months ago. Michael, if I may, I was going to just ask you to support me, but uh, the idea that to, to emphasize to the neighbors and to assist the neighbors understanding that these the stormwater chambers collect the the roof runoff and slowly release it. Um, to to uh, prevent flooding, to so that uh, the the stormwater chambers hold the water and slowly release it. It helps to mitigate flooding. Is that that's the whole purpose of these chambers, underground chambers? Yeah, that, that's the way I, I mean, that's the way they're, no, they're that's, that's how, that's what, that's the purpose of that. Yes. And the key and important part is that you want to get the separation between the bottom of the bed and the, and the ground, high ground water, which um, was two feet. They were right at two feet. Right. See, one of the holes was off a couple inches, but you were right there. Right. Um, so, I mean... I just don't. I just don't want Mass DOT to uh, to to respond or send comments after we're done here. I, I want to make sure that Mass DOT that DEP is done. Mike, I have a question. You know, you mentioned about the garage. What's your suggestion on 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 scaling it back a little bit? What what would be your suggestion? Well, I think it's like it's like the uh, on one edge it's 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 a hundred feet. Um, you know, if, if you could you know cut that down to like sixty five feet. You know, maybe that would. I mean, just just for the purpose of trying to wrap this up tonight. I mean, <laughs> if I was to compromise a little bit, is that gonna is that gonna appease the neighbors? Is that gonna appease everybody and, and try to get this done? I think it shows. I think it shows goodwill. I think you've done. I think you've done your part with you know handling the, the runoff and the and the and the, and the stormwater. Um, and it'd be a, a good a good show of faith on your part, Joe, if you made the uh, garage smaller. And hopefully the, the neighbors could support that. I mean, you know, I I, I couldn't. I I don't want to scale it back that much. I could scale it back a little bit, I guess. If it's, it's gonna, gonna if it's gonna um make something happen. I, like I said, I, this thing's been going on for so long. I, I'd love to wrap it up. Um, 
you know, take, um, I don't know, I didn't really put much thought into this, but, you know, if I, I shrunk it down another 15 feet or something like that. Yeah, that's not enough. That's not enough. That's the comment I figured I'd get. Yeah. Okay. So 15 by 40, that's another 600 square feet taking off of it, so. I, I think I think that's what I could that's what I would propose, but if that's not gonna, how about make it thirty feet? So so the backside is um, that leg is seventy feet, uh, seventy instead of a hundred. Uh, like I said, I mean, I, I wasn't thinking we were going to go down this road, so I didn't put much thought into it. Yeah, but. But it shows it shows good faith, Joe, in your part. Yeah, I, I'm trying. I've I've been showing good faith all along. I feel as though, um, you know, I'll take 20 feet off. We'll make that 80 feet, and that's if that's gonna make everybody happy. I'll take 20 feet off the building, and uh, you know, well, obviously we're gonna readjust the the storm water because we're taking more off, right? A little bit. No, leave this. Leave the storm water the way you got it. Okay. So leave the storm, storm water. I'll take 80, uh, 20 feet off the building, make it 80. And if everybody likes that, that's what we'll do. I, I say we wait for the DEP comments. Okay, so let's leave it at 100 feet then. And on their, in their letter, they, they basically said, if we have any questions, to so call Michael a bell. And he left his phone number. So we guess we can reach out to him if we have any questions. Now, obviously, there's some questions here. You should have done that two months yeah. ago. Well. Uh, we we sent this out and on December 20th. They sent it out. And the meeting just happened to be now, not two months ago. What so regardless of the fact, they did send the email on the 20th or the 21st of December. And no one replied back or reached out to him. I don't think that's anyone's fault here in the meeting. So his name is Michael Abell, A-B-E-L-L. -L, and his number is 978-694-3257. Okay. And he also gave his email address. Would you like that? Please. Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L, dot Abel, A-B-E-L-L, -L, all lowercase, okay. at mass.gov. Okay. Yeah, I I just want to make a final comment that you know I, I've been I've been bending all along here, um, jumping through hoops and hurdles to try to make people happy. And as you can see, it, it's very difficult to do. So, you know, it's something that was already approved. The building size was already approved. This project was approved. It was nothing more than a filing error or uh you know I, I don't know if you want to call it an error or, or or what but i was told to file it that way i filed it that way dp commented it said it, it can't be a, an amendment or a modification because of the size of the um modification i have gone ahead now and done a new notice of intent on a project that was already approved and now we're talking about shrinking a building i just proposed shrinking the building and that still isn't good enough. So, I, I, you know, I'm at my wit's end with this. I don't know what else to say. Yeah, I would, I would have hoped that they would have, um, you know, get support the reduction in size of the garage. Right, right. My, my comment earlier was that that letter went out to the abutters who appealed it, and it was dated December 21st. So... If there was a problem interpreting the letter or a question interpreting the letter, I would think in the last two months, somebody would have called and figured that out. But I guess nobody did. We thought the uh, last paragraph in the letter was sufficient to, to come to some uh, agreement or compromise. 20 feet is just not enough, Joe. I mean, you know, we yeah. appreciate your thoughts, but listen, it's, you know, the, the original house was 2,800 square feet with a two car garage. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people's people's livelihoods that we've yeah. worked and saved for 30 years, Joe. You've got to be understanding somewhat. Yeah. Well, I, I I'm taking that that compromise off the table at this point because you know I, I put it out there to try to get this done. It's not going to happen. I take it down. 
I will also say, though, I, I'm pretty sure that if one of the abutters had purchased this property, they would want to put what they wanted to put there, too. It wouldn't be a 6,000 square foot house with a four car garage. Okay. How big is your home? My house is 2,800 yeah. square, 2, square feet, Joe. 2,800. Oh, that's great. Okay. I think, I think everybody's more concerned about the size. It's not going to impact anything. But oh, the property values will do nothing but go up. I agree, but you, we've got to protect our property, Joe. You don't understand. So hold on, to no, I, understand. I understand. Listen, I'm doing this for my son, and this yeah. is our, this, I'm doing it I'm for my retirement. It. Yep, I understand. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it as an investment to flip and, and and make money and leave town. That's not me. I've done other developments in the area. I, I I've done a lot of distressed properties. I I've done nothing but good for the community. I'm not looking to hurt anybody. And like I said, this has been almost two years of back and forth. Um, I, I, I've done nothing but, uh, you know, take everybody's suggestions and, and try to do the best I can. And it just doesn't seem to matter. So we'll move forward, I guess. And what about the culverts that they... I, I don't know nothing about the culvert. Your, your house is on top of a culvert. I, I know that. Right. But there's... there's... I, I, there's a few right. that go right underneath the back of the house, down through your lot. Like we no, took a we, walk. We've already been down, down that road. We, that's, already, and then this, that's old news. We already discussed this uh, many, many times. I think I'm going to. Um, I, I think I'm going to move to continue. Uh, I want to talk to um, DEP. Um, okay. Because I feel I feel that I feel that. Um, Project we approved was okay, and I I need to I need to talk to DDP. Right, and, and again, I'm not trying to play hardball. I'm not trying to be difficult, but my point is, the commission approved the building for the size it was, and I'm going to stick to that at this point. Um, I just try to make a big compromise and, and and try to make something happen, but again, it it, it doesn't matter. So, yeah, let's let's, let's see what the DEP has to say. Um, anybody else in the commission have anything to say about that? I I would like to make a motion to continue because we're getting nowhere now, and I I totally agree with you um, that that the plan was approved. They haven't made any changes. I I understand the neighbors. I am if I live there, I understand what they're talking about. But if the if that area has flooded. Twice in 30 years. It's flooded more than that. Well, I, I, well, that's I, well, that was what I was told, but that was, I remember that comment. I didn't, it, I'm one of the abutters at one of the meetings. Um, Is that's it on record? Not true, then that's not true. I don't know. I wasn't living there. But I do know that, I do know that Mr. Salvaggio has tried to make uh, everything work. And it's not going to work. So at this point, I know how I would vote, but I would like to, I, I'd like to agree with Michael that I'd like to hear DEP weigh in. Um, there's nothing we're going to say that's going to convince anybody that's in a butter that what Mr. Salvaggio has, is, has had engineered plans um, that's going to change that. Okay. I, again, I am not an engineer. He hired someone and they got engineered plans and it's going to make the amount of water that's going to go into the ground is certainly not going to be any different than if there was no there. So again, I understand, I understand the abutters concerns. Um, I'd, like, I'd also like to hear, I'd also like to hear DEP weigh in. I asked Joe to, to, you know, knock it down 30 feet, but he did agree to do 20 feet. But you folks, um, don't put this on us. That, that building's too big. Yeah. So I mean, if D D comes back and says it's approved, okay. I don't know that. Well, I don't know. That last paragraph was telling. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're gonna try. We're gonna. See. We can. Um, we want to continue this. 
Um, and I mean, it's, they're all the winter still, so we'll, uh, let's um, see if we can get some answers from DEP. I know they're busy. Um, let's see what they have to say. I think you also, if you're going to email Michael, you're going to also want to email Alicia Galen. She's the circuit writer, and I think she is the one. Um, just because Mike worked on a on a um, on an appeal doesn't necessarily mean that it'll be assigned to him. So he may or may not be the um, the assignee, the an analysis. He would be the one with the most knowledge. He was at the site. Okay, you can give me that name later on again, Lucia. Um, I didn't quite hear it, so. Um, do, do you guys need the uh, actual letter from the DEP or, is, or Lucia, can you send that to everyone so they have it? Um, yep, I, I mean, I, I do have the appeal letter, but as of right now, this new NOI, um, there has not been comments um, that I have seen. Yeah. That's what I want to find out. Is there is there any more comments expected? I want to talk to somebody there. I don't want to I don't want to move forward and find out there was something a letter that's coming out next week that we didn't know about. You know, it's not, it's not fair to the neighbors, not fair to uh, Mr. Salvaggio. Um, so I I just need to I need to reach out to them and see if is if we're expecting anything more from them. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, I just, I do think that if, um, you know, scaling the project down is completely off the table at this point, you know, the neighbors do have the right, again, to appeal it. And I feel like we're just going to be going in this miserable groundhog day and Joe's just going to keep spending money and they're going to spend money. And I just wish that we could come to some sort of compromise so that the neighbors can actually like each other because Joe's son's going to move in there and that's going to not be fun for his son to move in and already has a target on his back. So I just wish everyone could try to figure something out and make it so everyone can live. As they said, these are their investments. I mean, this is people, houses are their retirement basically nowadays. So that's all I wanted to say. Okay. Yeah. I'm thinking about moving in myself. I think that might be better. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy yeah all right well thank you folks i i i hope we can i hope we can get through this um we'll keep in touch and uh we'll reach out to dep and we'll see if we can get some answers are we going to continue one month or two months so the motion to continue move second second all in favor? Yes. Aye. I'm going to do a roll call. Um, the motion to continue was made by Bruce, seconded by author Chairman Rizzo. Yes. Vice Chairman Comac. Yes. Commissioner Felt Canton. Yes. Commissioner Green. Yes. Commissioner Vivaldi. Yes. Commissioner Athos. Yes. All right, so the item is continued until March 24th. Um, I will make sure that all the neighbors have access to the link and the agenda, et cetera, and any information that we get from DEP. Um, but I hope maybe that um, the property owner will think about it and decide to perhaps scale the project down in the meantime. Yeah. Um, it did. <laughs> I just did, Lucia. I, I know, but maybe we just let everyone like sort of think about it. I mean, 20 feet is a very large compromise. Yes, um, it is. And I mean, I mean, you know, you commented earlier, you're supposed to be Switzerland. I mean, if, if so, the thing is, if it's not their way, it's not a good, good compromise. I, I'm, I'm very confused. Yeah, no, that's a lot. It's a big area. That's, that's 800 square feet knocked off yeah. the building. That, that, right. That's 800 square feet. Exactly. I mean, that that was a that was a great compromise. But again, it, it seems as though if it isn't the neighbor's way, then it's no good. Yeah. I mean, come on. Come on. That's, 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 that's not true. That's not true. She's trying to be uh, fair and, and get everyone to, to come What's together. Fair? That's not fair. What's not fair? I'm just trying to make sure that people can live in their house and not have to worry about bad development and their property, the runoff from someone's property. That's it. I, I mean, yeah. 
I know it flooded twice in 30 years. I know. No, Joe, that's not the that's not the case. We're gonna move. We're gonna move forward. That gentleman must have lied then. Okay. All right. Let's move forward. Let's wait till March 24th. All right. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Almost done. That was fun. All right. Um, next item on the agenda is under enforcement orders. Enforcement order issued to Daniel Ruiz, a property known as 44 Bartholomew Street, can be mass alleged violation is bringing multiple truckloads of fill onto the site. Buffer zone and resource area are altered. A valid order condition has never been issued said work continued until 2021 when vegetation is grown okay so sometime in the spring probably may or may? June. yeah okay um all right let's see uh minutes to be there was only january minutes i am still trying to work on the december minutes okay uh, that's it. Uh, did you guys approve the January minutes or did you want to approve them? Yeah, we could do that. I should have sent, I sent them out like a week or two ago. Yeah. I did go through them, I glanced through them. I didn't have a chance to gouge into them, but they look. Yeah, they were pretty okay. straightforward. It was just certificates of compliance. That's why though the January is done and December yeah. is not because December is a lot more things happen at that meeting. So do you want me to sign that or you No, you don't need to anymore. Okay. We don't we, we don't do signatures anymore. Everything's electronic now. Yeah, I mean I can. I have no problem doing that. Yeah, I, I actually don't even save the hard copies anymore because all they do is just they're taking up like I still saved them from, you know, whenever Maryland started doing them back in like the 70s. Um, but after, you know, like 20 years, they start getting really gross. So we're doing everything electronic now anyway. So we don't really want any more paper. I, I don't have anywhere to put it in my new office. I don't even have a filing cabinet. Okay. All right. So that's, um, so the minutes approved. Everybody approving the minutes? Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. The January, the January minutes. Second by Bruce. <laughs> Second. And I don't need to do a roll call for that. I, I'm not going to do a roll call unless you guys okay. want me. So we just raise your hand, everybody. Just... Yeah, because it's not a public hearing, so yeah. it's and it's. I'm not too concerned. All right. All right. Um, so, Lucia, I'll probably call you about this. And just, okay. And, you know, um, just like text me and like you know, hey, can you talk? And then uh, I'll. I'll ever anyone if you guys have my my phone you can text me um you know just don't do it on like a weekend or like you know late at night or anything weird like that uh, preferably not on weekends <laughs> okay. all right um well, I guess that kind of covers it for the evening um uh, have a motion to adjourn I move to adjourn second and and everybody think about this site, you know, this, um, I don't have, you know, I was not of the, um, I know it's, well, we can adjourn, right? <laughs> but I, um, you know, I wasn't ready to just say, you know, change the building. Uh, and um, I think it came out that most people just don't like the size of the building. You make some very valid points, Michael. That it's not and, our job. That's that's you know that's not our job. No. I I don't know, Michael. You know what? I I I don't. I disagree with you on that. 
I believe that these people, I don't know how, what, whether it's, you know, I, I believe in their mind that the bigger the building, the more it's going to impact their properties. Right. It's completely false. But I, I can't, I mean, in my mind, he's done so much to put this, this the water into the ground. I just don't see what they're talking about. But, but again, I understand if I was a neighbor. Yeah. You guys put, really shouldn't be talking about this, actually, because. I know, know. I know. I'm sorry I brought it up. That's, is it, that's going to open up a huge open meeting law issue if you just sent everyone home. Whatever. I know. All right. I just, All right. I, so, I, um, I just feel the neighbors, uh, they honestly feel the place that, 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 that it's going to affect them. I don't think, I don't think they're doing it to be spiteful. No, I don't think so either. No, I, I, and, and I really, I really need to find out what DEP has to say. I agree. Okay. All right. So that's it. Um, I, thank you folks. Good night. Thank I, you for spending time with us. Sure. So much fun. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good day. Get ready to start shoveling again. Almost, we're almost there. Good night. Good night, Lisa. Everyone, nice seeing everybody. Yes.